Greetings. Let me begin by posing a question. How good do you think your vision is? Well, regardless of your answer, unless you are an as yet undiscovered evolutionary marvel, you cannot resolve anything smaller than about 60 micrometers. To put that into context, it means that we humans can see objects down to about the size of a hair, but not much further. What do we do if we want to go smaller, to see cells and bacteria, or even nanometer scale viruses and proteins, all of which play vital roles in all forms of life and are therefore important to understand? We need to utilize technology to observe down to this level, namely optical super resolution microscopy. The following content in this podcast will be based on a lecture of the same name given at the University of Warwick by Professor Christian Egling. So, we want to image live cells, which means the method has to be non-invasive, because we do not want to affect the behaviour of the cells, or even worse, kill the cells. By combining light and far-field microscopy, we get a non-invasive technique. Far-field simply means using a lens at a distance from the sample. Fluorescence of the sample makes it easier to observe because it emits light, and this can be artificially introduced by labelling the sample with fluorescent markers known as fluorophores. These fluorophores can be stimulated with a coloured laser so that they are excited and given energy, and some time later they spontaneously release this energy by emitting light of a different colour. Using a confocal microscope, this excitation laser light is focused onto a point. The beam splitter splits the light by transmitting some and reflecting the rest. Any molecules with a fluorophore in that spot area will emit light, which is observed. However, there is a problem in that the spot size at best is 200 nanometers, but molecules are about 10 nanometers in size, so you could have many molecules in the blurry spot image and you wouldn't know. As we cannot make the spot size smaller to improve image sharpness, we need to manipulate the fluorescence instead. If we could turn off all fluorescent labels except for one particular area, then we have instantly improved our resolution, even with the same spot size. These super resolution techniques are known as STED and RESOFT. STED microscopy involves using a STED laser in addition to the excitation laser in our confocal microscope setup. The STED laser switches off all fluorophores so that they emit no detectable light. By using a phase element in the microscope, the STED laser takes the shape of a donut so only the fluorophores in the donut hole remain on. Here is an example of imaging 24 nanometer beads. The confocal image is very blurry, but the STED image is much better, giving nearly 24 nanometer resolution. In order to image, the STED technique has to use a high power STED laser, which can kill the sample. An alternative yet similar technique can be used, known as RESOFT. Here, you use a fluorophore which can change its molecular shape so that it has two states, one of which is bright and emits light, and the other is dark and doesn't emit light. Orange light switches to bright, and donut shaped blue light switches to dark. These laser powers are much less than the STED laser power, so the sample is not harmed. Here is an example of an E. coli bacterium being imaged with a confocal and then a resolved microscope, which produces a much better resolution of 70 nanometers. However, these excited bright dark states are not stable due to their higher energies, as they readily react with their environment, resulting in a loss of fluorescence. A solution is to use the nitrogen vacancy defect in diamond as a fluorophore, which is ultra stable because of the exceptionally strong bonds that form the diamond lattice, so it will not easily react with the environment. Therefore, very large intensities of the STED beam can be used on the NV center in order to get the donut hole very small, given the current resolution record of 2.4 nanometers. Application to imaging cells is still some way off, however, because unlike other fluorophores, diamond will not readily bond to cells, so advances need to be made here. Finally, let's look at direct application to the biological system using a STED microscope. The alignment and interaction of lipids or fat molecules on the plasma membrane of organisms is very important because most of the signaling events occur at the membrane. Two lipids, PE and SM, were looked at by labeling with fluorophores, and it was thought that the SM lipid is much more involved in processes than the PE lipid. If the diffusions of the lipids on the surface of the membrane are different, then they are undergoing different processes, and these diffusions can be measured with a STED microscope by varying the size of the donut hole. In free diffusion, the lipid is almost always moving. In trapping diffusion, the lipid moves, and then is trapped for some time during an interaction, and then moves again. The PE was found to behave with free diffusion, but the SM with trapping diffusion, which confirmed the belief that the SM is involved in more processes. To conclude, I hope this podcast has given you a useful introduction to optical super-resolution microscopy, specifically the STED and RESOFT techniques and their applications to biological imaging. I'm sure the future will bring even better resolution techniques in which diamond with its fantastic properties is poised to play a role in. Thank you for listening.